Welcome to Brainish English Stories. Nine-year-old Vanka Jukov had been learning to be a shoemaker with Mr. Aliakin for three months. The night before Christmas, Vanka did not go to bed. He waited until the master, the mistress, and the assistants went to an early church service. Then he took a small bottle of ink and a pen with a rusty tip from his boss's cupboard. He put a crumpled sheet of paper in front of him and began to write. Before starting the first letter, he looked quickly at the door and the window. He also looked at the dark icon on the wall next to shelves full of shoe lasts and sighed deeply. The paper was on a bench and Vanka was on his knees in front of it. Dear Grandfather Konstantin Makrik, he wrote, I am writing you a letter. I wish and all of God's blessings. I have no mama or papa, you're all I have. Vanka looked at the window where he could see the reflection of his candle. He thought about his grandfather, Konstantin Makrik, who was a night watchman at Messrs. Zivarev. His grandfather was a small, thin, very lively old man of 65. He was always smiling and had watery eyes. During the day, he slept in the servant's kitchen or played with the cooks. At night, he wore a big sheepskin coat and walked around the property, tapping with his stick. Behind him walked the old dog Kashtanka and the dog Vyan. Vyan was named because of his black coat and long body, like a fish. Vyan was a very polite and friendly dog, but he was also sneaky. He knew how to bite someone's leg or steal a chicken. Many times people had almost broken his legs or hanged him, and every week he was almost beaten to death, but he always survived. Right now, Vanka's grandfather was probably standing at the gate, blinking his eyes at the bright red windows of the village church. He was stamping his feet in his big boots, joking with the people in the yard. His stick was hanging from his belt. He was hugging himself because of the cold, coughing a little, and sometimes pinching a servant girl or a cook. Shall we take some snuff? He asked, holding out his snuff box to the women. The women took a pinch of snuff and sneezed. The old man laughed loudly and said, Take it off, it will freeze to your nose. He gives his snuff to the dogs too. Kashtanka sneezes, wiggles her nose, and walks away upset. Vine politely refuses to sniff and wags his tail. The weather is beautiful, with no wind, clear and cold. It is a dark night, but you can see the whole village. The roofs are white with snow. Smoke comes from the chimneys. The trees are silver with frost, and the snow is everywhere. The sky is full of bright stars, and the Milky Way looks very clear, as if it had been cleaned for the holidays. Vanka sighs, dips his pen in the ink, and continues to write. Last night I got a beating. My master dragged me by my hair into the yard and hit me with a shoemaker's stirrup because I fell asleep while rocking his baby in the cradle. During the week, my mistress told me to clean a fish, and I started from the tail, so she pushed the fish's nose into my face. The assistants tease me, send me to the tavern for vodka, make me steal the master's cucumbers, and the master hits me with anything he can find. There is no food. In the morning it's bread, at dinner gruel, and in the evening bread again. The master and mistress drink tea and eat soup, but I don't get any. They make me sleep in the hallway, and when their baby cries, I don't sleep at all because I have to rock the cradle. Dear Grandpapa, 
Please take me away from here, back to our village. I can't stand this anymore. I bow to you and will pray to God forever and ever. Take me from here or I will die. Banka's mouth turned down. He rubbed his eyes with his dirty fist and cried. I'll grate your tobacco for you, he continued. I'll pray to God for you, and if I do anything wrong, then punish me like the gray goat. And if you think I can't find work, then I'll ask the manager to let me clean the boots, or I'll go instead of Fedia as the assistant herdsman. Dear Grandpapa, I can't stand this anymore. It will kill me. I wanted to run away to our village, but I have no boots, and I was afraid of the cold. When I grow up, I'll take care of you, and no one will harm you. When you die, I'll pray for your soul, just like I do for Mama Pelagia. Moscow is a big city. There are many gentlemen's houses, lots of horses, no sheep, and the dogs are not mean. The children don't come around at Christmas with a star, and no one is allowed to sing in the choir. Once I saw in a shop window hooks on a line and fishing rods, all for sale, for every kind of fish. There was one hook that would catch a sheep fish weighing a pound. There are shops with guns, like the masters, and I think they must cost 100 rubles each. In the meat shops, there are woodcocks, partridges, and hares, but the shopmen won't say who shot them or where they come from. Dear Grandpapa, when the masters have a Christmas tree, take a golden walnut and hide it in my green box. Ask the young lady, Olga Ignatievna, for it. Tell her it's for Vanka. Vanka sighed deeply and looked at the window again. He remembered that his grandfather always went to the forest for the Christmas tree and took Vanka with him. Those were happy times. The frost was cold, and both Vanka and his grandfather made crackling noises with their boots. Before cutting down the tree, his grandfather smoked his pipe, took a pinch of snuff, and made fun of poor little Vanka who was cold. The young fir trees, covered in frost, stood still, waiting to be chosen. Suddenly, a hare would jump out from somewhere and run over the snow. His grandfather would shout, Catch it, catch it, catch it. Ah, uh, short-tailed devil. When the tree was down, his grandfather dragged it to the master's house and they decorated it. The young lady, Olga Ignatievna, Vanka's good friend, did most of the decorating. When Vanka's mother, Pelagia, was still alive and worked in the house, Olga Ignatievna gave Vanka candy and taught him to read, write, count to one hundred, and even dance. When Pelagia died, Vanka was sent to the kitchen with his grandfather, and from there he was sent to Moscow to work for Aliakin, the shoemaker. Come quick! Dear Grandpapa, continued Vanka, please, for Christ's sake, take me from here. Have pity on a poor orphan. They beat me. I am very hungry and so sad that I can't tell you. I cry all the time. The other day the master hit me on the head. I fell to the ground and only just woke up. My life is worse than any dog's. I send greetings to Aleona, to One-Eyed Tegger, and the coachman. And don't let anyone take my mouth organ. I remain your grandson, Ivan Zhukov. Dear Grandpapa, please come. Vanka folded his sheet of paper in four and put it into an envelope he bought the night before for a kopeck. He thought a little, dipped the pen into the ink, and wrote the address to the village, to my grandfather. Then he scratched his head,
thought again and added, Constantine Makrik. Happy that no one had stopped him from writing, he put on his cap and, without putting on his coat, ran out in his shirt sleeves into the street. The shopman at the poulterers, whom he had asked the night before, told him that letters were put into post boxes and from there they were carried all over the world in mail coaches by post boys with bells. Vanka ran to the first post box and slipped his precious letter into the slot. An hour later, full of hope, he was sleeping soundly. In his dreams, he saw a stove, with his grandfather sitting by it, legs dangling down, barefooted, and reading a letter to the cooks and Vian walking around the stove wagging his tail.